this holds the board underneath called a bat. And then I start throwing the pot. That's my thinking chair. That's the best rocking chair in the whole world. It's made by Amish people. Mennonite, I'm sorry, Mennonite people in Pennsylvania. And once I get centered, then I'm ready to start the pot and drop an opening. And when you get down to the depth that you want the pot to be, you'll slide your fingers over and that clay just opens up for you. Do all pots start the same way? They all start with centering, all the thrown pots. I make pots with slabs. I make pots with uh, extrusions. Uh, we use a lot of different formative techniques, but all thrown pots will start just this way. I call myself a wheelaholic. I love throwing pots. Is that fun? Yeah. I've been throwing pots over 32 years and I truly love making pottery. I didn't discover it until later in life, <laughs> but from the very first day, I knew I was bored to be a potter. I truly did. And so you're using the sponge to keep it real moist? Mm -hmm. uh, the, the clay essentially has to slip through your hands and you control the speed and keep it moist and keep it balanced. Okay, now we're going to lean it out just a little bit, and then we're going to walk it out with the stick. Here we go. And uh, you'll see why I love this technique. We're going to give it, these are called pulls. And I'm going to give it one more pull, and then it's ready to come out. And the clay holds its form. The clay has such amazing wet strength. You would never believe a pot could do this. And I'm just laying that bowl out there. And I'll lay it out two or three times, and then I'll let it rest. And I'll come back and lay it out again okay. in about an hour. What's the, are you letting it dry a little bit? You let it dry a little bit, and then you press it back down one more time. Although you don't have to do that, mm -hmm. that keeps it just a little bit flatter and enriches the shape just a little bit more. There you go. And later I'll push that little bit up right there uh -huh. or I'll incorporate it and make it part of the design. And the very last thing I do is because you're making a pot and because your hands have touched it and it's not something that you can buy at Walmart, I leave sort of like a, a, a little piece of zen meditation down in the bottom of each pot. And I'll take my finger, turn the pot on, the wheel on really slow, press it down, and leave a wonderful spiral, which is a universal symbol for many, many religions. There you go. Clean it up so you don't have a sharp edge. And I won't touch that again till after the firing. That's never going to be altered. There you go. Yeah. The Library Society was founded in 1748 by a handful of young Charleston gentlemen who wanted to pool their money together to buy the latest books and magazines from London. At the time it was founded, it was really the only educational institution in Charleston, and for almost 265 years we kind of carried out that mission of being at the heart of Charleston's kind of educational and cultural life. We helped found the College of Charleston, the Charleston Museum, the South Carolina Historical Society, and today we're a circulating library as well as a historical archive. So it's a very interesting kind of hybrid institution tucked away down here on King Street. I hope a lot of people come and visit it, and usually when people see the Library Society, they think books or they think manuscripts before they think art. But I think we do a great job of having both historic things on display and bringing in contemporary things to the space. If you're down here, you have to check it out. Uh, it's near a lot of galleries, so you just kind of, if you're seeing art in Charleston, add us to the list and stop by. We have 
many painters that are fabulous. For instance, John Trainer, uh, that you're standing next to, is a lifetime achievement member of the Selma Gundy Club, and and ha has won so many awards. Hangs in many museums. Most of our painters either hang in museums, run ateliers, are designated as living masters. Some of the best painters alive in North America. So everybody has kind of a seminal moment in their life as a gallery owner. And one of the big deal moments for me was when we uh, were able to represent Scott Christensen. This painting, Life, he did for us. It's a St. Simon Island. It's a, a, a tonalist painting. It is, it is unusual for a Christensen because he normally paints his home stomping grounds, which are the Tetons, or he'll do a lot out in the Pacific. We're, his, uh, we're fortunate enough to have a painting of something east of the Rockies and something very relevant to the Low Country, which he did for us. It is an unbelievable painting. And, and so, most significant works, this is right up there in absolute star land. I he's would say a, so. Yeah, he's a rock star painter. You know, there's thousands and thousands of people that follow him and, and take uh, painting lessons from him, and he's just wonderful. And you said you actually had um, someone come in that sat here. We have, we have a client that comes in pretty regularly and sits in the couch and cries. <laughs> she loves the painting so much. Wow. Yeah, it's, it, you know, I went out to, to Victor, Idaho, where Scott is, and watched him paint for 10 days, and it was, I'm, I'm fortunate enough I get to go stay with many of our painters, watch them paint, understand their techniques, and, and watching Scott paint it is, watching the art form at its uh, highest level. It's really something. And on your website you have pictures from oh, yeah, beginning you to end. Oh yeah, you And it's yes. amazing it's what cool. he starts with. It yeah. looks absolutely nothing like oh, what he finishes. Oh, I know. It looks so effortless, right? Well, <laughs> not. That's yeah. right. Very cool. It's exceptional. Attention women, here's a store that's all about you because it's all about the shoe. The Shoe Ferry, the hottest location for stunning shoes, awaits you on your way to Sullivan's Island in Mount Pleasant, featuring fabulous footwear, shoes for work, for play, for every day, and with a terrific selection of bags, jewelry, and the things that women wish for. Shop today at the Shoe Ferry in the Gateway to the Beach Center by the CVS at Ben Sawyer and Rifle Range Road. The Shoe Ferry. Imagine a world without abuse. It is possible that the day will come when abuse will go. StopAbuseCampaign.org believes that by working together, we will end abuse within the next 25 years. Because one more generation of abuse is one too many. Find out how you can be a part of the solution. Go to StopAbuseCampaign.org and take the pledge.